Who is the primary victim of war, men or women, starting with you? Oh my God. I'm gonna need a minute to think about that. Let's not start with me. <laughs> Plead the fifth. How about, right now. I'll, I'll count to 10. No, you're gonna have to start with somebody else. <laughs> okay. Uh, start with you, go ahead. I'm gonna go men on that one. I'll say men. Men. I think both, but. Both? Yeah, I think both. Both? Mm-hmm. Okay. Both. Okay. both. Yeah, lucky. Men? Probably men. Okay. Now, for those of you who said both, assuming you had to pick one or the other, which do you mm-hmm. pick? So I. Men. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I can't really pick because I feel like. I mean, I don't want to know if y'all want me to elaborate, but sure, you can elaborate. I feel like the women are suffering just as much. Mm-hmm. If the men are at war mm-hmm. and they're dying, and the women got to hold, pick up the pieces of all yeah. that, you know, and then raise children by themselves and all that, then, I mean, they're both really victims. I would say you both are me. victims, but he asked who's the primary victim. Primary, I mean, I think both. Who like, would you who, rather like, be in this Just because you're dead, I mean... There's children now growing up with fathers and all that. Wait, and but you get so, to watch them grow uh, up. Okay, let me get your answer. So, and then we're talking about like literal war, right? Not some like metaphor. Yeah, so you said both. If you had to pick, which? Um, statistically, I don't know. I mean, what? Like, I, I don't know. If you look it up, it'd probably be men. Okay, so going back statistic? to your point, you're saying, well, mm. it's both because, well, the men are dead, but the women, it's tragic they've lost their husband their father yeah, you don't know what son, they have to do to, to keep it going but wouldn't you pushing? agree that when it comes to being a victim of something being really really sad isn't as bad as being dead i mean what's the emotional trauma being passed down now onto these generations through these men being dead i mean sure they're the primary victims are they are they the primary victims i don't know like because now you go to war now, let's say your grandpa goes to war, your dad goes to war, your uncles go to war. Now, your grandma and your mom is raising, let's say, five, six, seven children, and you can't even raise these kids. Like, I don't know. Like, and that, and these kids don't have any fathers in their life. So, are they really the? I mean, the men, sure, they died. They went to war and fought and died, but they're still a victim. Well, then you have so. Let me ask you a different that. question. If somebody has cancer, mm-hmm. and then they die of cancer. Are they the primary victim? Well, of course. Or are there But that's there, cancer. That's family? a disease. I think it's different. Yeah, but you, but you still have to pick up the pieces, and you have emotional trauma. That's true. And that is all very the same. True. All the same side effects, right? Well, are you when you say primary true. victim, are you talking about like physically? Like, okay, obviously the men who go to war in totality. I'm not making any differentiation between. I feel like mentally, you kind of have to though in this situation. No, not really. Uh, Why not? Really? Well, the question is in totality. I feel like so, it goes both ways. I think I, I think say. I think he made a good point with the cancer thing. I do think he did make a good point with that. Speaking of which, we but didn't yes. get your answer to the question. Both. Both. Okay. I would um I would ask who would you rather be, a man in war or a woman at home stuck with, you know, picking up the pieces? I mean, you're asking a woman from her point of view what I would rather be. I mean, I don't know. That's a fair Just question. Just what situation would you rather <clears throat> find yourself in? I mean, I wouldn't even want to be a man, so <laughs> I don't know. Like, okay, you, then then we'll just uh, ask it this way: Would you rather go fight the wars while the men stayed at home? I mean, if I was physically um, more no, just as adapted, you are right sure. now, huh? As you are right now, as I am right now, but I want to fight a war. Definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, I mean, so, I don't think well, anybody wants to fight think, war. Do you think, <laughs> so let's men. assume for a second that you're happily married, okay, and your <laughs> husband has like a, a busted leg, okay, and you get drafted, and you get sent off to war, and he stays home, and while you're in the war, and there's blood and guts everywhere, and you're watching your friends get, you know, sniped, and it's the all this other thing stuff, to do and, for and, and you, d- hang on, and you die, is, is your husband as much of a victim as you? I'll- if my wait second. wait wait I'm sorry so if my husband's like a stay at home yeah because I don't know what happened I got drafted okay yeah see much of a victim yeah I think so I think you now think he's, he's got to pick up the pieces of, as of, you are? yeah he's got he's of just as much of a victim of war as I am I think that's great you know, just, in his you know? next in his next marriage he can be like he can sit down and be like oh man I've had it rough my wife died in a war 
and I'm as much of a victim as she is. Yeah, and, poor him. Man. And so, you know, you, you don't know I mean, what that you, did him. really? That's what you think? That's the point of view? Yeah, well, think about a woman. I mean, if a woman has sit there and her man her di died, and now she's got to go on with that, I mean, who is to even say like she goes and remarries but let's say she does not, i mean I'm not, like i'm you not can't... saying she's not going to have like emotional trauma from it i'm yeah, just asking like, do you really think that she's the primary victim here i think she's most i mean a primary victim yeah i think so i mean but that's just my opinion well then how come how come your husband wouldn't be the primary victim if I just you said went he off was. the war? I just said he would have been. I mean, oh, he would have been. So your husband I mean, I said okay. both. Like my my was my answer to the question wasn't man or woman. It was I feel like both are. So that's my answer. It's not. I don't think that, you can choose a primary. Is what I, she's yeah, saying. exactly. I don't think like that. I think they're very much equally primary victims of war. That's why I think. They're equally well, primary victims. Yes, I if they, there's a war going on, just like cancer. If if my husband dies of cancer, I feel like I'm primarily a victim of cancer. It took my husband. Now I have to sit here and pick up the pieces of that. So now that makes it's me somewhat a victim as well. Like I had to so, deal with that. So maybe if just because I don't have cancer. Doesn't mean so I'm not so a if you could it. choose, if your husband, if your husband had cancer or you had cancer, and you could choose. Which one would you choose? What if like if we had to choose which one had to have cancer? I mean, I I think being a righteous person, you'd always choose yourself. So I guess I would choose myself. I wouldn't want. And you would choose yourself. I wouldn't want. Then, yeah. I mean. But 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 wouldn't you be victimizing him a bit? I mean, yeah. But he would be a victim if he chose him. It'd be the same way, vice versa. If I wanted Got to do it. it, and he wanted, you know. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a couple clarifying questions on this one. So when it comes to some of you said both, does anybody here think it's women? Or is it both? I think it's both. Say more. Okay. So yeah. I'd like to perhaps break this down into a couple different conflicts. So, uh, and I want to bre break it down geographically. So, the United States, for World War I, who's the primary victim of war of the U.S. population during World War I, men or women? Or is it both? Wait a second. Um. Okay. World. I. But you're saying the primary victim of war. In World War who, World during War, World War I. One. <laughs> yeah. Does that change your answer at all? For those of you mm -hmm. who said both? Well, it, I mean, who was the primary victim who who had the most casualties was obviously men and probably young men at that. But um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, does that mean the women weren't victims in World War One? Yes, they definitely were. They had to okay, pick here. up the pieces. <laughs> the the women had mm -hmm. to pick up the pieces. Okay. Your yeah. answer? You said um, both, right? Okay, for uh, World War One, what's your answer for the for U.S. men? Uh, for U.S. men, I think, um, well, since I said both, I feel like men, it's more physical, like physical trauma, and for the women, it would be more mental. And I'm not saying that war doesn't for, have for the women. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just because, like, say your like mm -hmm. husband died, and that's like the love of your life, and like you love that man, and he dies, and it's yeah. like, oh, like that's okay. It's, like, and I believe too, then in World War One, or no, I guess it was probably more like World War Two, where it was like the economy went really bad. And women were the ones who had to carry the economy while men were at war, you know? So just to be clear on, on the World War II note that you just brought up. Mm -hmm. the no, they had to get up and, like, go work. Yeah, but it's not because women didn't have rights before crazy. that. Those, so, those victims. Yeah. That's why they gave us rights, because work. they couldn't work. Weren't they, like, Wait, woman? Well, just to be clear, you said women <laughs> didn't. There's a lot. I mean, they did, they did have more some rights, but they, they didn't have the right to vote. And so Wait, just to be it? clear, just to be clear, women... You're saying your argument is women didn't have the right to vote during World War II. I mean, I can't I can't remember the year, but if it was the 30s, 40s, or 50s that women what, were able to vote. What year did women get the right to vote? I don't know. Was it the 50s or was it the 40s? Well, here, let me ask you a different question. I'm not what sure. year? What? What decade was World War One? It was in the 1910s, right? Well done. Yeah. What years were World War Two? It was the nineteen, the late 1920s, 1930s, I believe, wasn't it? Or didn't it start? It, the, it all started like Nazi Germany, all that started around like the 20s, the early 20s. So I can't give you exact dates because I can't remember. 30, I mean, 40s? you said late 30s. so you're No, not no, I said late 20s, off, early 30s, right? Wasn't well, it? Well, not late 20s. Late 30s is correct. Late 20s for World War II, not so oh, much. Okay. Uh, so okay, women got the right. Okay, World War One, 1914 to 1918. Mm -hmm. Women got the right to vote, 1920. World War Two, 1939, mm. 1945. Right. Okay. So there you go. Uh, you know, but more than me. you said that 
the well, women. I know, I, I know women weren't really working at in during World War II up until that time. So I know that that's when women became in the workforce more and was you during think World War II. Women having to be involved in the war effort during World War II is a bigger level no, but of it, suffering and victimization than the men who had to go I mean what are the women to having war? to deal with like they they you well, they have I'll to raise I'll, I'll listen listen they I'm have gonna, to raise families you, they have to work conditions. they have no See, help that's yeah, the economy is super poor so yeah, these yeah, women these are, are victims extreme conditions I'll explain the conditions to you to women mm -hmm. they had to go into factories sometimes for up to 8 hours a day oh, and man. work Listen, no, 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 no. And their husbands are at jail, or, sorry, their husbands are at war. Mm -hmm. They're at home taking care of chil all the children, all the bills. The economy is super poor. Children. The economy is super horrible. We're in the Great Depression, right? The Great Wait, Depression's in the 30s. So <laughs> the Great De wasn't it World in the War 30s, II, early Great 30s? Depression. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, maybe that okay, was after. Back, so, back to history. So hang on, hang on, hang on. Man, I okay, know some history, but what would be the distinction now? Exact years. Wait, what would what would be the distinction now between a single mom getting up and going to work? It's just like I, I don't get it. If if the the victim there's they're victims because they had to look after their own children, which no, they would have to do anyway, because and they, they had to work. <sighs> no, they're victims. Of war and guess what? Nobody's because of the economy, because their men are not there. They're at war. Their husbands mm -hmm. are dying. Their fathers are dying. Their uncles, brothers, sons are dying. Mm -hmm. That's emotionally traumatizing. I know during the World War II economy was not that great. I believe. I maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the economy was great, but I thought it wasn't from what I thought. But I've got a couple questions here. So okay. I mean, those poor women. They had to. They had to go work. It's not about working. Okay, There's gonna, an emotional trauma, and women are way more I know, more it's way more emotionally men. traumatizing to deal with the death rather than getting blown up yourself. I'm not saying, like, the Hold men on. aren't victims. So let me, let like me, I said, let me give a, just throw out a couple statistics here. So 16 million Americans served in the United States Armed Forces during mm -hmm. World War II. There were uh, almost 300,000 were killed. 670,000 were wounded, almost exclusively men. Yeah. There were also 130, or excuse me, 130,000 American prisoners of war, of whom uh, 116,000 returned home after the war. Now let's also make an assumption here, and maybe, uh, Andrew, I don't know if you can help me search this, what percentage of, uh, of the serving military men were married? Because typically they're drafting 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds. I know people got married much younger then. I don't know if they have statistics Again, on that. Uncles, fathers, but let's, brothers, let's just for the sake just of husbands. let's just for the sake of argument say that a majority of the men were not married, didn't have children, didn't have a significant other, didn't have a girlfriend. So the sort of second oh, I shouldn't okay. In my view, the secondary victims would be who the it's family. A, it's estimated. It's estimated. So I um, so wait, hold on. Right. About forty-six percent were married. Forty-six percent. Okay, so a minority, ah. but still a lot, right? Still a lot. Okay, but let's talk about then that majority of men who were single, who were not married. If we talk about them, we look at them. They, I assume, they only had a mother and a father. If they're the ones that go and die, and good. they don't have a significant other to mourn for them wouldn't I mean, the you hold on mom, let me finish my point grandma let me finish sister. my point wouldn't you said okay you said mom grandma sister younger children brother you might have, father younger single. uncle you you do realize that the suffering the the secondary suffering that you're alluding to that is experienced by family members is equally shared by the genders the mother That's loses that. a son the father loses a son mm -hmm. So assuming the these majority of men, I think it's wrong to like think that women aren't just as much as victims. But okay, hold like, on, men are more victims. But hold sure. on, so just because but they had actually engage with the scenario I'm giving you here, of the single men mm -hmm. who had, let's assume they had a mom and a father who were living, and let's say they had no siblings, and it was just the mom and the father, and then that boy, man, whatever, went to war and he died. His mom is going to uh, his mom is going to grieve. His father's going to grieve and mourn. 
in that scenario, who's the primary victim of war? Um, I mean, definitely the guy, I guess. But I mean, who's to, who's to say that the emotional impact and physical and financial impact doesn't reflect just as much in the family? Right. But OK, so hold on. Let's, I'm, I'm trying to look at this from a math perspective here. I, I, I just got to ask this real fast. Point. Who's and the I'm, primary you know, victim in an abortion, the mother or the fetus? Oh, man. Fetus. <laughs> I'm not going to speak on this one. This is yeah, well. I'm just asking you. Who's the primary victim, the mother or the fetus? I don't know. In abortion? Yeah. Um... Probably the baby. I mean, I don't know. Depends. I feel like I, I feel like I feel like I'm definitely pro woman's choice. So I'm not gonna sit here. All right. And let me. Uh, let me. We can know. come to that later. We can come to that later. So okay. If there's one mother, if there's one father, and there's one male who dies, mm -hmm. and if this is the majority of the men that were involved in World War II that lived in the United States. But okay, okay. But it, just because they were single doesn't mean that they didn't have children or anything. Just, that you don't they have, probably, you know what if saying? they weren't married, they probably didn't have children in this time period. I would say yes and no. You know, okay, I agree with you. No, I, no, I agree with you because during that time, okay, obviously, let's assume, let's yes. But does that mean they didn't have children? Wait, hold no. on. But the children. So let's of the assume the gender of the children of these men <clears throat> who had children out of wedlock. Fifty percent were boys and fifty percent were girls. Okay, what, like uh, the children, the babies. Yeah. Yeah, so what does that have to do with You're who's the a victim? One, These children are now up. growing up with no father. It, I don't even it, understand your argument. Out of wedlock, argument. even worse. I don't even understand Damn. your argument here because the child could be a boy or a girl. The framework of the question is, who's the primary victim of war, men or women? And so I if said it's both. a boy child, and if it's a female child, and this is equally distributed, then it, this it doesn't not? help your argument that it's both. It does. No, because it okay, does actually. You, fine, I'll, I'll <laughs> grant you. Let's say he had two children out of wedlock. He has one father, one mm. mother, one boy, and one girl. That's still an extra man who's dead. Who is the primary victim of war? Everybody involved. It's amazing. I have to, so. <laughs> I don't even know how to actually argue this. I'm exactly. just going to, if Andrew, if you, I'm going to defer to you because I can't even. I was just going to say, if the baby is the primary victim in an abortion, what is the deciding factor that makes the baby the primary victim and not the mother? Mother's health. How oh, far along the fetus yeah. is. Yeah, no, hang on. I'm asking, I'm asking the, uh, the gal here. She was the one who gave the answer that she thought that the baby was the primary victim. If that's the case, what is the deciding factor as to why the baby's the, the, the victim, the primary victim and not the mother? I mean, what, would you, what I, do you think that I, would be? I feel like I can't really answer this question because it's not really something I want to speak on for one. And two, I'm pro, like, people just make their choices. Like, I do what I, what I would do personally, I don't put on to what the next person could do. So what I feel like would be um, wrong, I'm not going to judge somebody else. So... You know what I'm saying? He's like not that's not my if you get Yeah, one and or not. so He's I'm not going to answer the question for that <clears throat> reason. What I feel like my opinion is on the answer, I don't want to give it because it's a very political question and Okay, I okay, know, okay. Like, well, let's let's try yeah. it a different way. You would agree that aborting at 9 months would be that would be bad, right? You would at least agree that that's true. I mean, I yeah, the baby's full grown, full term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if the sure. mother had the abortion, then who would be the primary victim? I mean, why did the mother do it? Like, why? She, didn't want it she just didn't want it. Okay, then the baby, because now you're then just being baby. selfish. So what would make so what would make the baby the primary victim? I mean, you carried a baby full term to. Where yeah, what's be? the? Would it be the a baby couldn't live outside the, the womb at this the point, victim? so it doesn't even need to be in in your, you know. So at that point, if you get an abortion, then sure. But I don't really want to speak on abortion because yeah, it's not my place. I don't think. All right. I think. Well, do you have something quick? Because yeah, pretty quick. On. I think the point he was trying to get at is <clears> the baby's <throat> the primary victim because the baby's dying, and so he was going to turn that over to men in war dying and saying that if. You use that logic for abortion; it can be applied to this scenario. It's like comparing apples and oranges, like war to abortion. Like, 
It's two different things. Words are very well, like you can compare things that are very different. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's, there's never a comparison which is going to be exact. What we're trying to just do is just test the logic for perceived victimhood. Right. So in this case, in war, I think I understand what you're Save saying. One, you're man. saying that there's a bunch of external factors uh, which could make women also <clears throat> victims in war, which would include things like emotional damage, trauma, uh, psychological intergenerational trauma, which could happen because you lost grandpa when you were a kid, all these different factors uh, which could possibly go into this. Okay. But if we're looking, even though we have all these correlates for different factors of victimhood, I would still say there's primary correlates. In this case, I would say the primary correlate is death. And so I would ask that even in an abortion, I would assume that this type of trauma and stuff like this at nine months would also exist for women. So why would the baby be the primary victim? That's the question. Yeah, I don't really want to speak on the abortion 